Welcome to the I Create Daily Podcast. I'm Leora Alderson. And I'm Devani Alderson. We're your co-hosts on this journey of creativity and productivity. I Create Daily is for artists in every genre of creating, from musicians to writers, crafters to inventors, bloggers to entrepreneurs. I Create Daily is a movement for creators serious about your art. If you're into creating anything, this podcast is definitely for you. Thank you so much for joining us on this journey. Hello, and welcome back to another Coffee Break episode with the I Create Daily podcast. I'm Devani. And I'm Leora. And we just got back from Philly from the uh, podcast movement 2018. So huge shout out to Jared Easley, Dan Franks, and the entire team for setting up a beautiful event. The stage setups, everything, you guys did a rocking job with that. So it was so much fun being up there, meeting all the amazing people and learning about this growing podcast industry. And we are especially excited to talk to you guys about the growing um opportunity for fiction writers to become fiction influencers through developing audio dramas and fiction storytelling through podcasting and just growing your brand through different mediums and really getting creative with how we present our message our stories our perspectives with the world to grow an audience so yeah definitely and uh, on the shout outs before we get rolling on that uh, it was wonderful to meet John Lee Dumas yes. and Kate Erickson in person and get we, to hug them. Yeah, we interviewed um, Kate early on in our podcast. Right. And we and we have followed John uh, and EO Fire for years. It was probably one of the first podcasts you and I yeah. ever listened to. That and Pat Flynn's and, Smart Passive Income. Yeah. And Pat Flynn was there as one of the keynote speakers as well. And he did an well. incredible keynote. He did an incredible job, including introducing the, um, what do you call, the coming out of his podcast with his eight-year-old son. Kayoni. Kayoni, And it's called, I think it's All of Your Beeswax. Yeah, All of Your Beeswax. Instead of the None of Your Beeswax, sassy thing you say in middle school or whatever. It's All of Your Beeswax, and it's just conversations with he and his son. And if you're listening to the video, you see my dog, Caspian, who has separation anxiety, so refuses to let us podcast without being here. In her lap, but he's not going to be still because he also wants to go for a walk. So So anyway, and we also met Mark Asquith and Karen and the whole podcast website team. They post our podcast yeah um so yeah it was a great event yeah no so let's so just talk a little bit more about them so if you're if you're thinking of starting a podcast and then that you need a podcast hosting company and website for instance even if it's just a very simple website and the podcast websites company which is the platform that we use those guys are just amazing we've been with them for a few years already and their customer service is incredible they're they just always go over and beyond in terms of customer service and in terms of their attention to their community Mm -hmm. uh, and their service is reasonable and we interviewed both mark and kiernan separately kiernan Kiernan, sorry i'm sorry kiernan separately on two different episodes that we'll link below right and And meeting them in person was just so awesome. Yeah, they had a so they had a party. We just gotta share share this. So so Devani's never bowled before, at least or at least she doesn't remember having ever bowled. She did one more time, one other time when she was little. Um, and I I didn't bowl because it's disgraceful. It's <laughs> it's not a good it's not a pretty picture. And uh, I almost influenced Devani to think that bowling wasn't good. And then I realized I shouldn't influence her about that because hey, it might be her sport. And turns out that she had a fantastic time. In fact, she said there's just something so incredibly gratifying and rewarding about bowling where you get to take this heavy object and hurl it down an alleyway and crash in to other objects. It's so stress <laughs> relief. It's such a stress release. There's, anyway, yeah, you apparently it's my sport. Yeah, you got two strikes in a row shortly before we you ended the, for the evening. So yeah. you, you ended on a good note. And all of that was thanks to the podcast website yeah. folks who hosted an amazing get-together party um, at the like after last last night the last night of the conference yeah so the whole thing was amazing and we're obviously buzzing off we just got home like literally Literally. an hour ago yeah when you're listening to this we got home like yesterday yeah probably or whenever but yeah it was just so much fun so we should dive into what we learned about the fiction yes um we attended a panel 
And apparently audio drama, if you look up audio drama in your podcasting app, your iTunes podcast app, Stitcher, Google Play, whatever you listen to podcasts on, um, look up audio drama. And if you're a fiction writer, especially tune in to the different ways that people are telling story through audio, because not just through audio books, but actual audio podcasts, because it's a new medium to build an audience in a growing market sector where oh, just over the years, as you grow your um, subscriber base, more advertisers are going to start also recognizing podcast as sort of not really the new radio, well, kind of the new radio, yeah. you know, it, it, it's not the same, mm -hmm. but it is another evolution of the radio industry. And so as that grows, you want to get in early and establish a platform in an industry that is here to stay and is just growing yeah, exponentially. Yeah, definitely. One of the things that since we have fiction writers in our audience, as well as in our family, uh, it has been anguishing to witness the frustration of fiction writers you spend so much time and energy and effort writing and, and working hard on your book only to have it sell for so little per book on you know on amazon and you know basically kindle books from 99 cents all the way up to maybe 14 20 dollars but but if you sell a fiction book at 20 dollars, you're not going to get nearly as many sales as you would if it's let's say 7.99 or 10 dollars. and it takes a lot to produce a good audio a lot to produce it and then to get the audience that will buy it uh, and through and and to gain the reviews that you need to be able to generate more sales mm -hmm. um, it just and and to advertise when you're making so little per book is also very challenging so we understand the plight of fiction writers and you know for every kind of industry you know throughout the eons there's there's been some kind of transition and transitory time where there is like it was difficult and there was a struggle to see where that industry was going to go and where the people who were in that industry, where they could take their, their craft. Yeah. So for fiction writers, we, in fact, we've been working um, with Joshua Robertson and Lillian Oaks, who are our fiction writers in the I create daily community. Um, and they have since created a website called the book tavern .com, mm -hmm. where it is that they're beginning to create a resource of stories online uh, through their website where you can also buy their books. But it's more than that, where you will actually be able to read stories online read and their it, recommendations, what they're inspired by, what they like. Exactly. And yeah. that is the way to go. And hopefully they will also start a podcast. It's certainly something we could recommend. So here's the thing that we um, you know, that that seems to be evolving for authors. And that is, and, and this is really good news, especially if you're an author who like, I mean, certainly Joshua is as well as Lillian, they're very uh, extroverted when it comes to storytelling yes. and sharing about their work. They go to a lot of conferences, comic cons and that sort of mm -hmm. thing. And when it is that if you are an author who also enjoys reading and storytelling, then uh, through, you know, again, the spoken voice, this could totally be your medium. If you're not, however, keep tuning in because even if you don't care, if you're an introverted writer, which many writers are, yeah. right? And really, many podcasters are. Yeah, that's aren't. true. <laughs> and you don't want to read your own stories out there in audio form on podcast, then the good news is you can hire voices to do it for you. Mm -hmm. So there's so many things for us to share, and it's so exciting. It's kind of hard to say, like, you know, okay, Focus. what's the linear track on yeah. this? But and so maybe it isn't a linear, maybe it's more like radiatory where it kind of goes from the center core concept so and if you're a story writer before you move <coughs> on just if you're because there's so many ways that we could go with this if you write fiction and you're listening to this and you're tuning into this um please don't hesitate to email us creators at icreatedaily.com and share your struggles or successes because we a we'd love to feature your successes and b if you're struggling we'd love to create episodes to help answer your questions around yes. how to really build a tribe that will actually eventually buy from you or that you have a substantial following that sponsors or advertisers that are relevant for your tribe will want to advertise on your platform yeah and we'll, after we kind of like 
share all of all this that we have rolling around in our head. We'll also summarize it in the end as well as in the show notes for mm -hmm. this episode. Um, but the, the bottom line is this is another turn of the spiral of the way radio used to be before TV where it is that radio was the place for family entertainment. People would gather around the big box radio and listen enraptured at the stories that were unfolding and the news that would be shared uh, on the public, on the broadcast or whatever it was. And so the next turn of the spiral of that is it's not just a few stations, but rather anyone who works on just getting a little bit of resources in place to learn how to record something and put it up online in a podcast format has the opportunity to grow your own audience as an author by reading and putting your stories online for free. Now, how do you get paid for that? Well, at, over time, you're going to grow an audience. And so there are several ways you can get paid for that. One will be by growing your audience and creating avid listeners who will also then want to buy your books. So let's imagine that you write novels, then you could create short stories that you read online for free that engage people mm -hmm. into to discover your writing to you know if they love your writing then to follow whatever you record and put out there for free. Even if it's just a five minutes of a short chapter uh, that engages them. So there are a lot yeah. of different ways to do it. There's no one way what we're sharing and just some ideas of how you might do it. So here's an example. So like uh, Devani's father, my husband Coleman um, has a novel out and his website on his website, he is writing different, what we're calling tributary stories that are offshoots of the character stories from his book uh, or his books that didn't make it into the book. So and a lot of them are standalone. Oh, and exactly so and and preferably so then that would be an example and and every writer has this you know you, there there's a lot of material that ends up on the cutting room floor that doesn't make it into the book in fact typically a lot of writers have to cut way back because they've gone into too much detail on a given character in fact when we interviewed David Perry mm -hmm. uh, he said that same thing that his the first feedback from his editor for his first for book. his first book was that he went into way too much detail for his characters but here's the thing if you love a story you want more yes. and so this is a good thing so for writers this is where you can take some of that that didn't make the final cut into the novel yeah. and craft it into short stories um, preferably in like several one or two chapter form that are complete stories unto themselves yeah. think of mini series on TV mm -hmm. so mini series of you know like well, like when you guys are growing up the thing that comes to my mind often throughout the years because it was such a good series is Little House in the Prairie and you and and I say that too because we don't watch TV now, and so I'm not up on what's on. The now. current thing that um, Dad, Nicola, and I are enjoying is the Timeline um, TV show, and we love the Sherlock series. Yes, and um, I did like a few episodes of Blue Bloods, which my grandmother loves. I only tune into like. I've only watched like three or four of them and they've been enjoyable, but it's not like my favorite thing. Yeah. Called, so but, yeah. Well, wh wh whichever of those it is, the point is yeah. you do grow with the characters over time. Yes. You, you know, you learn something more about the family, about the story, about mm -hmm. the circumstance and the, the world over time. But at the same time, each story is also a standalone mm -hmm. in terms of it has a beginning, a middle and an end. Yeah. You know, it has like a, you know, a crisis that comes to resolution. And so that's the thing. If you as writers can create more of that, in short story form, potentially you would do more to grow your following as an author to create more short stories initially and start sharing them for free online via one of the online platforms. So if you don't want to create your own podcast, there are online platforms where you can share that. We'll probably be creating our own as well because we're really interested in supporting writers and having resources available for those who don't want to get into how to do all the technical stuff of creating your own podcast, but still want to grow an audience. And do you remember any of the resources right off hand? Cause right. I'm blanking on um, that. There are a few, there are definitely resources. I think we'll link them in the show notes. And a lot of them, you do need to pitch a solid story for them to produce for you. So um, I'm not sure the full logistics of all that, but we'll yeah. include it in the show notes. Yeah. One of them is called Westwood. And the other is called, well, Audible has some opportunities as well. If you yeah. search um, That's right. Audible, Westwood, and... 
There's one other, and I'm up. Oh, Panopoly, Panopoly, or something like that. I'll link it. Um, okay. So, but it, but those are more pitch based, and you yeah. really need to have like they do amazing production. So you really need to make sure that you're submitting like polished ideas, not just emailing them just whatever comes off the top of your head. So you'll want to, I would say, start listening. If you're really serious about yes. this, start listening to some of the better quality audio dramas from them that they produce and see what themes that they like and see if there's an angle. Because if you can create an idea that that's really good and that matches some of the other content that they produce, then they're far more likely. Yeah. And all, it, it makes it, it you, you just look professional and like you did your research. It's like anything else. Really. Yeah. So search, uh, you could also search stories online or um, books online. Night Vale is another one. Sorry. Night, I just Night remember. Vale, Night, Vale, Night Vale. 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 Night, Night Vale. So N I G H T and then V A L E. Okay. So, so search story books online or stories online, um, online stories, that sort of thing as well, audio dramas as well as, and you'll find more resources. Um, so as far as places that you might also be able to publish your, your story. So again, keep in mind that if you're serious about becoming an author, a multiple time author, um, then you probably, you will want to build your own website and your own audio platform because, then you own it and it and it belongs to you all of it the resources etc as well as the tribe uh, if you post it on somebody else's then you have the advantage of using some of their traffic uh, get it well getting having access to their traffic just mm -hmm. like if you're selling on Amazon but again you don't own it anymore it's on their yeah. platform and they I mean you still have a lot of rights to what you know you're the author of the story so you do have say I'm sure but at the same time they're the producers and they're they own the audience and you don't content. own the audience right they own the audience and you would have to look in the details about who owns the content at yeah. that point um, so so it's a bit, don't look at it like feel intimidated though, because really it's just a whole vast horizon of opportunity and it's a new world uh, unfolding and opening up. So and I think it's a really good thing if you are a storyteller and writing a book seems really daunting. This is like a new era where you don't actually have to be a writer to tell a story. Yeah. I mean, obviously, you've never just had to be a writer to tell a story. There's public speaking. There's, you know, all of these. There's acting and all that stuff. But more and more, this audio industry is becoming a serious thing. And so yeah. if that's a natural medium and you have a good voice and you're able to pull people in and intrigue people, then it's just another avenue. Right. So over time, you know, how you will monetize will be through advertisers because advertising money that's been uh, supporting radio and TV as well as print for all these years um, is seriously looking for new avenues to, to, to invest their advertising mm -hmm. money. So that oh, was yeah, one of the things yeah. that we learned about as, at the conference as well. And you, Hollywood in Hollywood as well. That's right. Hollywood is eagerly looking for new content. Um, and one of the yeah. places that they're looking is on podcasts, on audio stories online. They're mm -hmm. looking for good content and good material. And that might be one way, one advantage of having your story on a network. It True. could be one advantage. I don't know what Hollywood's looking at. It was just one line that one of the panelists, um, mentioned really briefly she was just saying that hollywood's looking at podcasting as another avenue for gaining new original content to produce for movies and so maybe being on a network gets you more noticed who knows honestly it boils down to are you good at telling a story you're good at telling a story and how prolific are yeah. you um how much do you so so the one of the other ways like um people can actually can you can read it as your, yourself as an author and or you can take it even to like the highest level and have professional production created from it. Yeah. So some of those who've been doing it longer, some of those who kind of have been in the industry already, they're taking story and they're getting into these, um, you know, acted like professional actors performing the stories mm -hmm. and the reading. We've read the audiobook, The Golden Compass Comes yes. to Mind. It's a good example that has a lot of different readers and mm -hmm. actors involved in the reading of it. It's quite a production. Yeah. And so that obviously if you have a budget to hire, you can even go on to Fiverr, 
I V E R R dot com and hire voice actors to read for you, whether it's one or whether it's an array to actually take your book into almost like a screenplay yeah. kind of audio version. Yeah. Um, like a voiceover. So that costs more, but you would get, you would grow your audience more quickly if you do the more professional the production is. So it could be as simple as having a microphone and a recording device and putting it onto a website or a podcast platform like podcast websites, or it could be as elaborate as doing the recording with hired mm -hmm. actors and then turning it over to a production company to spin it off for you into a polished audio, um, complete audio, finished audio file with music in, you know, as well, even sound effects. Yeah. Um, so do you remember, uh, like, one of the guys was talking, I don't remember what his name was, right up hand, we'll have to look at our notes for that, the guy that was doing that for others. Um, there was a guy doing that with BBC. Um, he That's was a right. former BBC. Um, uh, he helped do their documentaries Producer. and produce. Yeah producing documentaries and being the voice for their documentary and then they moved to him leading up their audio dramas as a podcast and so they would get actors and they would literally like act out the scenes on location but it would then be in a voice audio produced thing so it was a huge thing i'm not sure the names there's so many production right. companies apparently sure. i don't remember all yeah the well and that's the thing so it's so like a fire hose of information yeah, but right so we'll link to some of them, uh, but but the, the deal is is that you can find you can start it yourself, and then you can find resources and support services for any aspect of it that you want to hire out. And again, like with anything else, if you have a budget to hire uh, people to help you, whoops, our screen just froze up for a second. There you go. Yeah. If you have a budget to um, have people to help you, you're going to grow more quickly. If you're prolific, let's say that so here's an example that comes to mind when we're talking about reading stories mm -hmm. and tell and storytelling mm -hmm. you were talking about. So there are some people, maybe even you would be in a good example, who have more ideas for stories than time to write at this point. Mm -hmm. So that yeah. would be a great outlet then where short stories don't require as much time to develop because you, you're, it's, not, it's a shorter story. Right. So you're not developing the characters as much and you can get more of your can spin off you're telling a more, more concise quickly. story well what's really what i'm most excited about in this space in terms of well i'm i'm just really really excited for authors to start expanding their repertoire of how they can um generate content yes, like yeah. it's really exciting yeah. to me um i've unfortunately been interrupting a few times because right. i'm so excited That's so okay. i apologize I, yeah. that when other people interrupt it grates on my nerves too so <laughs> i'm just no gonna worries. address that elephant but um i'm really excited about the concept of these stories because it's like you're able to test a story before putting all this energy and yes. effort into writing and that's it a great point. and by the time you decide that this is popular pop, popular enough to publish then you've already almost gone through this drafted version that the audience loves hopefully and you're getting that audience feedback and then you're able to write and publish a whole different version that's a little more yeah. cleaned up and people can have separate experiences of the story. They can have the podcast version, they could have the audiobook version, they could have the published version, yeah. and all of them could be slightly different, so yeah. it offers a new experience, and yet it's the same story, and you can add different elements, and the thing about a book is once it's published, it's published, and unless you write a new book, it's not very easy to change or add to it. But if you have a podcast that accompanies that book, then you can continue to expand this big old world you've created uh, beyond the book itself, and yet each episode can be this concise volume that if a new person is listening, it still intrigues them and they get that beginning, middle, and end, even if they're brand new and they're listening to episode 35 and it's a whole, you know, topic. Yeah, and so, so what that does, what this does is it brings the audience into participation with you. They become more familiar with you. They develop relationships with you. And that's part of what will help you stand out 
you know, amongst the masses of other authors, you know, in this, in this prolific era where anyone can create and easily produce a book, basically, mm -hmm. easily, you know, relatively, right? Yeah. Um, in other words, you don't have to wait and go through the publisher. You don't have to There's, hand write it. You don't have to hand write it. There's no middleman yeah. where anybody can bring your ideas to life through story. Um, then what you end up with, though, is that people, so, so what separates you from the next author or the next book when there's so many on the shelf and what separates you is growing an audience of, of fans who you know are, who love the fact that you're they're kind of involved with the creating of your story essentially and, and being in somebody's ear yeah <laughs> like as, as several of the panelists mentioned like you're in people's ear that's like very intimate and you're really building um trust and audience in such a new way and so here's yeah so the big guys are getting into podcasting, folks. So uh, we spoke with someone there from Random House. They are starting their own podcasts for authors and primarily for audiences, for, for readers. For avid readers. Yeah, theirs, theirs is for avid readers. So probably they're going to be having some of their authors come in and talk and be interviewed mm -hmm. as, as well as, you know, have people who are in, in the audience, in their reader audience, talking about the books they like and why. Um, so that's just one example. USA Today was there. NPR. I Heart Radio, NPR. Um, so, so I saw tons of media things that we hear about regularly. I mean, um, Times has audio content. Uh, the Atlantic has audio yes. content. The, yes. um, what is it? And the Investor Magazine, I forget what it's called, has audio content. Financial All the, Times. Yes. 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 Times. Yeah. So, so this is definitely the trend. The trend is moving to, and of course, of course Gary Vaynerchuk, whom we've oh, yeah. followed he has for a voice while. Con. <laughs> he has voice con. He's created a conference. The first, um, he's this past, excuse me, this past year was the first time that he created a, his own conference and one of them was VoiceCon mm -hmm. um, because everything is so moving to voice because it's convenient. You don't have to be trapped and stuck at a screen. Uh, you can, you know, you don't, everybody who's sitting so much, you know, during their work don't want to be sitting also at the end of the day just reading. And so to take it on the ears means you can mm -hmm. take it walking, you can take it at the gym, you can listen while you're doing housework and that sort of thing. That's what we do all yeah. the time. So, so things are definitely moving to voice. And, and we'll have a whole other episode just about um, educating the audience on podcasting because while it's a growing industry, it's also one that apparently there's this rough barrier of entrance because there's, so, there's a vast majority of people who don't know what a podcast is, how to download, how to right. listen to it. And so, I mean, it helps us grow if you guys share the podcast that you find interesting. Um, it, it helps the I Create Daily podcast grow. If you guys share or tweet out or Facebook post out the yeah. episodes that you find valuable, it helps the entire industry grow when you share the content and the podcasts that you enjoy listening to because word of mouth is how this stuff spreads. Word of mouth is how your audiences grow. It's how your art sells. It's how your book sells. It's just, it helps the whole audience. It helps the whole industry. And so we're going to also do another episode that kind of dives into the education of what podcasting really is, how to access podcasting, how to help educate your friends, find another medium to be entertained and educated. So that's just a whole other topic. <laughs> yeah. So, so this is, it's an exciting time. Now, if you're an author and you're kind of concerned about the concept of doing so much work for so long for free, um, yeah, that's tough. But consider that previously it would be working so hard to write a manuscript that may or may not get approved, may or may not ever get printed. Um, and then if you did get approval and get, you know, a, a book deal, then you're only going to get an advance if you already have an audience or you already have a name, mm -hmm. a known name. And then most of the time what that it ad advance is for is for you to do your own marketing to let people know about your book. Yeah. Um, so, so the industry is really changing. And so the deal is if you're really passionate about writing fiction, um, and, and this actually applies not just to fiction, by the way, we should have started that up front. It yeah. applies to any authors creating any content. Uh, but let's say now, if you're really passionate about that and you're writing your stories or whatever, let's say that you worked for two years writing and, and recording audio stories, etc. And it took two years before you began to monetize. Well, 
would you be sorry at that point that yeah. you know so you don't want to get to the end of two years and not do anything and then be sorry you that you didn't do anything yeah everything you do now toward building and growing your audience around your art is one step and you know it's like it's one more brick in the wall essentially yeah and, and i'm so glad you mentioned that because one of the other panelists had also mentioned that they were talking about how it's like yes artists should get paid no matter what medium you're in artists should get paid but um free is often this like dirty word of like it's like it's it's, it's a funny double-edged thing it's like um there's the starving artist mentality but then with the serious artists who are really looking to make art their career as opposed to just their hobby um like free is this dirty word and it's like no you should charge what you're worth and yes and yet doing the free work also is instead of how much you'd be paying for advertising yeah you know that's right and i think that's a really really good point because you're you're paying in more than one way so you're either paying via money or currency you're paying somebody to help you get ahead which is totally fine if you have that money to invest in a network or something to help you get ahead by all means do it uh, or you don't have that kind of money to spend to get ahead and so you're spending time and sweat equity to get ahead and yes money wise it's free but time wise you're building an audience you're building trust you're building and this platform in which later you will monetize so i think that's important too it's it's, it's never free you know yeah yeah so and examples of platforms where that are there for artists would be patreon uh for artists of all kinds yeah and creators of all kinds we know uh joshua robertson has a stitcher channel for a video twitch. game sorry sorry twitch <laughs> thank you thank you stitcher is a podcast is a platform <laughs> there's so, so many it, platforms that yeah, sound similar so stitch what twitch twitch is for video gamers to create so we're kind of neutral about those platforms we think it's great that there are resources like that mm -hmm. for creators especially if you don't want to create your own platform yeah but if you do want to build your own platform then you're maybe better served to be putting that energy and effort into writing for and creating content for your own website and your own platform and your own podcast rather than on somebody else's platform and so, I, all crowdfunding stuff like patreon like kickstarter like twitch even all of them and even social media for that matter a lot of them it, they grow better if you have an audience so i mean whether you're blogging vlogging podcasting um whatever medium that you choose to put your work out in the world pinterest instagram if you're a photographer a photo gallery on your website whatever it's going to be um please remember to build your own audience and then leverage it into a patreon into um a whatever funding platform that you're going to go and if into. you need to if you built your own audience right. then you may not need to you generally uh, i mean the reason those places are springing up is because of all these transformation mm -hmm. you know in the world of fiction and writing and content yeah. creation in general so there are going to be so many opportunities um and so just consider what works best for you there's so many possibilities very yeah so can you think of anything else like that we haven't covered that are the most important points so far um I think the biggest thing is now is the time to get a move on, yeah. uh, you know, yeah. honestly. Yeah. I mean, don't, please, don't, don't get stuck in analysis paralysis. Yeah. Reach out to us. We have a Facebook group and community of artists who, it's the I Create Daily for Creators Facebook group. Uh, there's tons of groups out there. There's tons of podcasters out there. There's so many resources to help you get going. So please yeah. pick a route and start building your brand now. Yeah. Now is the time. Yes. You know, there's a window of time before the rest of the world is flooding in and doing all of this. And just get started yeah, yeah definitely. do something please yeah so we hope you're as excited as we are um yeah as Devani said just share your send us your thoughts creators at iCreateDaily.com. remember please to tune into the podcast and share with your friends ask people as you encounter them if they're listening to podcasts share with them the i create daily podcast please leave your reviews etc but begin to like get the word out there yeah. um for the uh, of this resource this incredible free resource for people that right now for the most part is also commercial free yep so yeah all okay. right guys have a good one thanks
Thanks so much for joining us for the I Create Daily podcast. Please let us know what creatives you would like us to interview and what topics you would be interested in hearing more about. And if you enjoyed this show, please leave a review on iTunes. We value your feedback. We read all the reviews and it just helps us get the word out on the I Create Daily podcast. Thank you so much. Thanks so much.